Stocks continue uh, to climb higher today as investors see more signs of easing inflation in today's jobs report and ISM data. Uh, after a down year, can the market make a turnaround in 2023? Let's discuss that with Ron Insana, Insana, senior analyst for CNBC and commentator. Also with us, CNBC contributor Michael Farr. He's chief market strategist at Hightower Advisors. Welcome to both of you. Michael, um, you characterize yourself as relatively more cautious than maybe you typically are. Explain why. I, I, funny, Tyler, I always think I'm relatively more cautious than everybody most of the time. But when statistically uh, we're supposed to go into a recession this year and earnings are supposed to go through a contraction, it's hard to be, you know, let's go all cash. And you certainly don't want to be in the thin branches of risk right now. So lots of things gearing up against us. But I think there's still opportunities longer term in those companies with good balance sheets and good cash flow and things, too, that have been beaten up that you can, I think, probably continue to buy. Uh, but being really aggressive in here, I think caution is probably warranted. Ron, we heard yes, earlier some, some sort of back and forth about the Fed and whether we should believe what they're saying. They said pretty clearly in those minutes uh, there is not going to be any interest rate relief coming in 2023. Should we believe that? Well, I don't know, Tyler. You know how I feel about all this. I mean, we're getting more and more data that, that comports with the position I've had for quite a number of months now that inflation peaked in June. We're seeing weakness in the service sector. We'll look at the employment cost index and CPI in coming weeks to find out whether or not we get confirmation of that. And we could be heading toward a recession. It's very rare that you have a yield curve as inverted as this one, service sector, manufacturing sector showing signs of weakness, and the real estate market in a complete recession without getting a general recession somewhere down the road. One would suspect they would respond to those conditions if and when they occur. Uh, but look, I'll take the But would Fed it be a pivot or a pause? Would it be a pivot or a pause? Well, for, I think first a, 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 a pause and then a pivot. And, and I think that's critical going forward. I mean, I think we're going to need a couple of P's to happen this year. Pandemic's going to have to completely go away in China, or that's going to have to work out some way advantageous to Chinese economy. Profit recession, if it occurs, is problematic. A pivot's going to be required. And, and Leon Cooperman uh, this morning uh, with our colleagues mentioned looking for a new bull market in this environment without help from the Fed might be a mistaken way to look at this year. How do we figure in, uh, Michael Farr, the fact that the Fed is not only tightening rates, uh, but unloading uh, content off its balance sheet and what that will mean? Well, I think they're doing exactly what they, you know, they, they're doing what they said they were going to do, Tyler. They're tightening monetary conditions. And for the past 10 or 15 years, the Fed has been our backup. The facts here as investors in the markets, things would get tight. The Fed would cut rates, stock prices. They've completely changed that role. So they're the ones who are doing the tightening. Uh, I think they're going to do it not only on the balance sheet, but continue to do it on rates. Will they go too far? Yes, they'll probably go too far. But to the question you ask, Ron, will they really stick it out through the end of the year? Probably, but maybe not. You know, if they get things wrong enough, if we have some other exogenous shock, they may have no choice but to actually stop and pivot. I'm figuring that Jay Powell's going to do what he says he's going to do and stick with this rate hikes and mm -hmm. probably get quiet and leave the cost of money high for the balance of the year. And I think we've got to see an uptick in unemployment. Until you see unemployment north of 5%, you typically see wage inflation higher than CPI. Mm. Uh, they need to equal out, kind of. Can I ask both of you, what would make you at this point rip-roaringly bullish, Ron? <laughs> Uh, Fed would have to stop or, or pivot. I, I think that, you know, from a uh, from a secular perspective, Kelly, I think that's the only thing really that launches new bull markets. And, and you look across, you know, the balance of history and you do not get raging bull markets while the Fed is tightening. It's Marty Zweig, you know, rules number one and two, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the tape. And, and you know, the tape has been erratic at, at best, even of late with a positive week. So I, I think you need that tailwind. Uh, to get a secular bull market in place. So, Michael, three of your choices. I want to move on to a fourth here. Uh, RTX, which is Raytheon, obviously, defense and air, aerospace, Google and FDX. But I want to come back to a stock that I know you like to talk about, and that is Johnson & Johnson. Can J&J &J be J&J &J without Band-Aids? Uh, it, it always is tough when you don't, can't have your big brand. You know, one of my 
Other stocks I like is Mondelez, and they have Oreo cookies. God, they've got to keep Oreo cookies. Yes, I mean, of course, J&J is a hugely broad company, and yes, it's a brand product for them. Uh, but no, J&J can continue to grow. You know, and to that list, Tyler, I'd even say Valmont, which has been one of my picks for a number of years now in that infrastructure space. There are some names like Valmont and others mm -hmm. where I don't think they're getting the big crowded trade, perhaps, that J&J is getting, though. You know, with a AAA balance sheet and that dividend, I'm not selling it either. I stick with my J&J, well, as you know. sounds disturbingly like Voldemort to me, but whatever. <laughs> uh, far and farther. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Ron and Michael, Thank we you. appreciate it. Happy to hear.